What's next for Blue Origin's new Glen now that it had its first spectacular launch? There has been such a pent up demand for launches, especially for larger launches, and the supply has been lacking. We've been waiting so long for the promises of these new rockets to come on board. And finally, some of them are. And we're just gonna have to see how quickly Blue Origin can ramp up its operations, ramp up its cadence in order to compete in this really interesting marketplace that we find ourselves looking at. So first off, New Glenn is a heavy lift vehicle. It is partially reusable. They're talking about making it fully reusable at some point, but for right now, it is partially reusable. It did have a very successful first flight last night. It did not successfully reland the booster back onto the barge in the ocean, but they'll get there. You know, it takes time did not take away at all from the success that was at this very first launch. I actually thought that it would do pretty well because of those BE-4 engines. There are seven BE-4 engines on New Glenn. There are BE-4 engines on the ULA Vulcan and Vulcan flew twice last year successfully. So they had some success track record with this type of engine, this new engine. And therefore I thought, you know, actually they have a good chance of succeeding with this first round, but of course, everything needs to go right, not just the engines, in order for a rocket to get to orbit, which New Glenn did last night. From our vantage point, it really was kind of slow to ramp up there. It was very, very cloudy. So all we really saw were some clouds that got illuminated from behind. And that's about all I saw. We saw it, my, my husband and I, we saw it peek through the clouds just a little bit, but not enough to get a good a quick photo, um, but it was still really cool. We had the live stream go in, you know, so I could see the beautiful mock diamonds and the blue flame. It was just absolutely gorgeous from the launch, gorgeous from the live stream, gorgeous from people's photos. Cool to see it sort of in the clouds, but you know, next time, hopefully it'll be a little less cloudy and we'll have a really good view of it. Still, history was made. History was made last night. And uh, you know, if, if I've got extra dark circles under my eyes, that's because we did actually stay up. Um, I, I stayed up almost till three, <laughs> watching the flight and then celebrating afterwards. And it's exciting to have this kind of success as its first go because it really carries that momentum forward. So Blue Origin now has the opportunity if they can grasp it, to carry this first successful mission forward into other successful missions and really capture the market that's been waiting. There are, of course, some customers that have already signed up with New Glenn. I'll talk about that in a moment, but any customers that were waiting to see how New Glenn would perform should now feel free to go ahead and contact Blue Origin and say, yes, we're ready to sign that contract or whatever it is. So I put together this graph, really super simple graph of how frequently New Shepard has flown. And you can see it really fluctuates. There's no really good trend upward. Um, we would like to see a trend upward. In one of those years, 2022, there was a failure at the end of the year, close to the end of the year, that um, really paused their operations for more than a year. And if you're trying to ramp up operations, if you're trying to get a steady cadence of flights, then that's not what you want to do. And so what you want to see is a increase of launches over time. And that's just not what we saw with New Shepard. And that could be because of the culture of Blue Origin being more R&D focused and less operationally focused, at least until recently. Or it could be the fact that there weren't a lot of payloads, weren't a lot of users for a suborbital vehicle. Um, suborbital vehicles, and, and I've been in the suborbital researchers community for a while, they were promised to be this rapid cadence so that there could be a very frequent iteration of any kind of payload that you flew. And of course, flying with your own payloads. And we have seen a little bit of that. We've seen a little bit of that iteration with the payloads that fly, um, with the researchers that I know who have flown on New Shepard. We've seen some repeat customers on New Shepard in terms of the tourism side, but we haven't seen that promised rapid cadence of flights. We've seen uh, orbital flight happen much more, you know, commercial orbital flight happen much more frequently, frequently than commercial suborbital flight. And so I don't know, again, if that's because of the lack of users, the lack of money that Blue Origin found in launching suborbitally, um, or if that's just the way that Blue Origin is going to work, that they are just going to launch an infrequent number, you know, one to six times in a year. Hopefully, what we will actually see is that New Glenn has so much of a demand in users that there is this ramp up so that we can see frequent launches of New Glenn. I doubt they'll be able to catch up to SpaceX anytime soon. Will anybody ever be able to catch up to SpaceX? We don't know. So they're off to a really good start. This rocket, of course, is long delayed. <laughs> it was originally planned, announced to have... Um, 
its first launch in 2020. So four or five years delayed, you know, um, it happens. It happens a lot actually in this industry. And now that it is operational here at the start of 2025, as I said, they have this opportunity to really keep that momentum going and they have some users. They have a backlog of customers already. So already, um, pushed, unfortunately, it was supposed to happen that last fall, got pushed to the spring, was the NASA escapade to a spacecraft that are going to go to Mars, blue and gold. And it's a really cool mission. It was supposed to go last year. They don't have a firm launch date for it right now. They're saying spring. But that should be a very high priority for them because of the trajectory of getting spacecraft to Mars. It really needs to happen very soon. Also on the docket, which they haven't talked about in about a year, um, 10 months or so, has been Blue Moon Mark 1, the first path first Pathfinder mission, they talked about launching in March, you know, sometime in the spring of this year, which I don't think is going to happen, but I think it'll happen at some point this year. And that is an uncrewed, smaller version of their lunar lander that they got the contract for to do the Artemis lunar landing with, with astronauts on board. Along with that national team award from NASA was Lockheed Martin that's designing the and, and building the CIS lunar transporter. And that's supposed to launch on a new Glenn as well. But aside from those NASA missions, there's also commercial customers. They've got a backlog. They have, of course, 12 Amazon Project Kuiper Kuiper sats with an option of 15 more. So perhaps a total of 27 Project Kuiper satellites. And we're just going to have to see how quickly those ramp up because Amazon is under a bit of a time pressure with how much how, how many satellites they're supposed to launch in a certain period of time for the FCC. They'll probably get a waiver from the FCC because I don't think they're going to launch nearly as many satellites on time. But still, there's pressure from the multiple launch service providers that Amazon has contracted with, including Blue Origin and Ariane 6 and SpaceX and I'm forgetting the others. Blue Origin's New Glenn also has contracts with UTELSAT, Mu Space Core, SkyPerfect JSAT, OneWeb, Telesat, and AST Space Mobile. So quite a backlog of customers. I imagine they all want to get their satellites up in space pretty soon. New Glenn also has the capability of doing rideshare. They haven't really announced that yet. They haven't really you know, talked about that a whole lot. It's a larger fairing size. I'm putting up this image by Ken Kirtland. It's an older image from 2020, but he put that out there. He's right with the infographics, by the way. And so thank you, Ken, for this image. It showcases how large the fairing size is compared to other launchers. It's a seven meter fairing. So that's pretty sizable. It's not Starship sizable, but it is pretty big. I was recently quoted in an Aerospace America article saying that New Glenn has the opportunity to capture the market for Starship before Starship is operational. There are tons of customers that are waiting for Starship and some of them don't need Starship. Some of them don't need that massive there that massive performance. And Starship is not yet ready. Whereas New Glenn just demonstrated that it is ready and sure it has a backlog. So it's going to take some time, but any customers that have been waiting for SpaceX Starship that don't necessarily need SpaceX Starship might start considering New Glenn. And in fact, I've already heard of it happening just un informally. And so you can imagine then that some of this market share that we're seeing you know, going to some of these other launchers or waiting for some of these other launchers, Vulcan's another one. ULA has been so slow. They launched only twice last year. And so if Blue Origin can ramp up cadence, if they can like buck their trend of being so slow with their launch cadence, then they really do have that opportunity to take some of that market share that's been waiting and waiting. And of course, so much is going to depend on the culture of Blue Origin, the internal culture. Blue Origin's new CEO, David Lamp, he has the opportunity to change the company culture as much as a CEO can to make it less R&D focused, less slow, less this turtle and more actual company that can make money. And the only way you're going to do that, the only way you're going to compete with some company like SpaceX, for example, is to start to ramp up that cadence. If there's a huge demand, a backlog of demand, you need to create that supply. And the only way to create that supply is to keep on launching, to launch more frequently. Tell me what you think in the comments. Do you think Blue Origin has a chance of changing how they operate so they can compete with SpaceX. One more thing to throw a wrench in it is that even though this first new Glenn went up spectacularly successfully, there could be an incident. There could be an incident in the second one, the third one. And Blue Origin has shown that it is very slow to recover from incidents. 
whereas SpaceX proved last year it could recover quickly. You know, they didn't have a full blown rocket explosion last year, but they had a few minor problems. And they did the investigation, they recovered, you know, the FAA approved licensing, and they were back within days to weeks last year. And I'm talking SpaceX. And Blue Origin is not like that. Blue Origin is not going to be like that anytime soon, if ever. And so if we do see an incident with a future new Glenn rocket or even a future new Shepard rocket, we don't know what that is going to do to the speed at which Blue Origin recovers and is able to continue to launch. Because what we want is a market that is not a monopoly. Monopolies never turn out well, and I do not believe SpaceX has a monopoly for the record, but I do believe that it's not healthy for so much of the space industry to be reliant on SpaceX. I think it's really good to diversify, to have the multiple providers for you know, multiple reasons, for price point and performance and just redundancy and like any other rocket that is out there that we can start to launch more and more things to space. Because this is all just transportation. Transportation that is beautiful and fun to watch, but it's what goes into space and what we do in space that truly matters. So we need more things in space, more assets, more capabilities in space so that we can do more in space.